Welcome back to Small Arms Firearms, where the trigger pull weight is the same as my bench press. Today on Small Arms Firearms, we're going to do some trigger upgrades to the P365 platform. In my previous videos, the only complaint I've really had about some of the P365s is how squishy the trigger is. It's not a terrible pull, it's not a huge amount of weight, but there's really just a lot of squish when you hit that wall. So what we're going to be doing today on Small Arms Firearms is replacing the trigger with the IntelliFire trigger from Tyrant, and we're also going to be putting in the entire trigger spring kit, over travel, pre-travel, sear engagement, and pull weight kit from Tactical Triggers. But before we do the actual install, I wanna get a baseline. I wanna have actual evidence that these spring kits and the actual new trigger shoe helped improve the trigger pull, uh, the weight, whatever it is. Let's get some actual measurements and kind of see where we are with that. So what I'm gonna end up doing is kind of speeding up this footage and just so you know that I actually did this 20 times. I'm not gonna do it five times, I'm not gonna do it 10 times. I'm gonna do 20 trigger pulls and we're gonna get an average on the stock P365 FCU. I wanna make sure that we have a good consistent number. And then after we change it out, we're gonna do 20 more poles with the new spring kit and the new trigger shoe installed from Tyrant. And for that, we have this brand new Wheeler Digital Trigger Gauge. So far, I've been having a lot of fun with this. All right, let's get started. And after 10 pulls, we are at, you can see here, 10 trigger pulls, and then the average is right here. And that's five pounds, 10.8 ounces. Let's keep going. Okay, that's 20 trigger pulls. And you can see right here, 20 poles, and then this is your average trigger weight for all 20 poles. We have a reading of five pounds, 12.7 ounces. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, stock trigger, this one is broken in, uh, thousands of rounds through this, so it's definitely smoother than probably you're just out of the box P365 FCU. But I mean, just to get an idea, um, we're doing this, this direction. So this is nothing. This right here is just your take up to the wall. I mean, I don't even mind that being long, to be honest, that your sear engagement or your sear, your striker safety is disengaged this way. So like, if you only have like this much, your striker safety is disengaged. So like, that's kind of sketchy. So, um, it's nice having that take up because it doesn't harm anything. In my opinion, I know a lot of people would kind of freak out like there's a lot of take up. I don't really care about that part. It's when I get to here. And that wall, I mean, it's a great wall, but then it's squish, 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 squish. And then you, like the defined trigger break is not really there. So the reset's not terrible. There's the reset, that's not bad. Uh, but again, that just that squishy squish, that squish, and then it breaks. That's my problem with it. It's just this squishy, mucky, like I hit the wall, and then, yeah, it's just hard to tell where it's going to break. Squish, squish, there it broke. I don't know. That's always been my complaint about the 365. And I know a lot of people say, hey, this is a great trigger for this uh, micro compact, subcompact, whatever. I, sure, it is. It's it's definitely not bad for being out of the box and this one's broken in 
when it comes stock, it's not going to be as light as this. So that's what you think. So instead of getting maybe five pounds, 12 ounces, you're going to get a six pound trigger. And after you shoot a few thousand rounds through the FCU, like I have, it's going to lighten up. Um, what I just want to get rid of is that squishiness. I honestly don't care if the trigger weight goes down a whole lot. I don't want a super lightweight trigger for an EDC. That's why I'm also incorporating the um, IntelliFire trigger from Tyrant. Interesting design. I don't usually, the trigger dinguses don't bother me on a carry gun. I, my finger goes there anyways. I don't even notice it pretty much on any gun I've ever fired with them. I'm going to take a break. And I'm going to come back and let you know how long it took me to install the trigger and the kit. Um, I'm not going to do an install video there. The manufacturers have install videos that are, that are great. They'll walk you straight through it. Um, I will, however, time myself. I have replaced a trigger shoe once on a 365 years ago, and I haven't done one since. So I'll let you know after I'm done how long it took me to change out the triggers, uh, this whole kit from Tactical Triggers and along with the IntelliFire trigger shoe. I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and installed the Tyrant IntelliFire trigger first because there's no spring changing, there's no other internal changes to the trigger itself. It's just, I went kind of bling on this one. It's just that trigger shoe. So you got your little dingus, so if you hit the side of it, it's not gonna pull. Go ahead and rack it. So we can't get a trigger pull if we just graze the side of it. Um, but if we activate the dingus, I can, you can already tell, and I'll, I'll put side by side, the pre-travel's eliminated significantly, if that's something you're looking for. And then the brake, yeah, it's, it's not a whole lot different. It's, it still kind of rolls and it's just hard to find where that actual, I mean, it's easy to find the wall. There's the wall. And then actually, you know, it might be a little better. I don't know why, but the reset seems about the same. It's still squishy, squishy, squishy. And then, yeah, you find that break. So I can say this much. It, it's definitely, it's, it's improved a little. It has improved a little. I'm not gonna lie. I, um, just the feel of the trigger. If like the shoe feels like it fits my finger a little better, I don't know. It's not like it's that much bigger, but just the shape of it, I guess. It still feels mushy. Yeah, I mean. The trigger pull is still nothing to write home about, but for a concealed carry gun that's so tiny, yeah, it's just, there's that mush. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm gonna put up a, a clip here, and this is straight from Tyrant CNC's YouTube installation video. After they get done installing it, and they're pulling it, I, obviously, I don't know if that's, because this is an, an older FCU uh, from an XL. Um, about six months after the XL first came out. I don't know when that was exactly. So the FCU in here has definitely had some more wear to it. And the trigger, when they pulled it, it was just mush, 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 bang. So my trigger in, in this one is already not as mushy and i'll put a side by side here so you can see how they're pulling the trigger on that thing and we mine's definitely better get than a that. tactile feel for this yeah, it broke as in it was a clean break of the trigger it would have went off try again now i'm gonna put up a, a clip here but we're gonna do the same thing again we're gonna do 20 pulls on the trigger gauge i got it ready to go and we're going to get an average pull weight I'm assuming it should be the exact same pull weight, if not very close, because we didn't change any springs, we just changed the trigger shoe. Let's find out. Okay, so that's 10 trigger pulls. 
and so far we are at five pounds, 13 ounces. Kind of what I expected, we'll, we'll do 10 more. Okay, that's 20 trigger pulls, and it looks like we've got one ounce heavier. I, I can't remember now, it's been like an hour since I did this. But we are at 20 trigger pulls, and the average pull weight is five pounds, 12.7 ounces. So yeah, you're not gonna get a lighter trigger pull by just changing a trigger shoe. You can maybe get a perceived lighter trigger pull if the shoe fits your finger better and it just i don't know i'm not perceiving a lighter trigger pull at all on this but what i am perceiving is my like my finger has more contact surface and the just the trigger feels like it it fits better it's still just mushy mushy mush mush there and then just a hidden uh, it's hidden it basically like it's kind of a surprise when it's gonna actually fire because it's just mushy and then it just fires i'm hoping that the tactical trigger spring kit and the pre and post stop will fix that i don't even know if i can use the post trigger stop on this or even the pre trigger stop. i don't know um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to use those parts from the tactical trigger kit with the tyrant and or telefire trigger in here. I'm just going to have to play around with it and see what works. So far, it took me about a solid 45 minutes to get this and telefire trigger in. If you've ever replaced a trigger on a P365, you will come to appreciate how much of a pain in the ass it is to get that sear back in with that sear pen. It, it sucks. So if, if it's not something you do every day, don't get too frustrated. Keep at it. You'll get it in. It's just a pain in the ass. Okay, so we're all done here. We've got the trigger installed from Tyrant. Um, there's a couple things that we couldn't do here. So the over travel stop, which this goes on behind the trigger so it kind of just it's just a little metal plate just sits on there it's nothing crazy fancy and then it prevents the trigger from going back further now it comes in three pieces so you can break it apart and you can if it's not coming back enough to maybe actually break the trigger then you can uh reduce that which is what i have done because if this was the stock trigger, I feel like you would have to use the full over travel stop and the pre travel reduction um, to get this to be a nicer trigger. But the Intellifier trigger already reduced a lot of that pre travel and a little bit of the post travel. So I have one shim in for the post travel reduction. And they have three different, um, I don't remember, Sear something springs. I used the number two one. Apparently the number three is the strongest, number one's the weakest. I just went with the number two just to try it out, see what was gonna happen. Um, seems to be working nice. The one thing we couldn't install was the pre-travel stop. So it's another small shim. And what that does is it, it just basically sits in front of the trigger here and prevents it from moving forward further. It's fairly simple. But again, the Intellifier trigger kind of reduced the pre-travel a little bit. And the problem was I couldn't even get the FCU back into the uh, lower module. I tried it on the Shalo Tech Flex and I tried it on just the stock P365 uh, grip module. The FCU would not go back in with the Intellifier trigger. So if you are gonna be using the Intellifier trigger, maybe when you go to Tactical Trigger's website and you're ordering the stuff, the over travel stop and the pre travel uh, stop might not, you might not even need those. Maybe save yourself a little bit of money. Um, we did install the other springs, and I remember why I hate working on 365 SCUs. It's not something I do every day, so I'm not super proficient with it. And the overall time it took me to install all of this was right around like three hours, and that's because 
when I was pulling out the safety lever pin, it just went a smidge too far. And then I'm re-watching the install videos and I'm looking up the SIG guy and I'm trying to remember how he finagles the stuff in. And I end up taking apart the whole FCU basically again to get the sear pin out, to line up the sear again. And that sear spring that's in there is a pain in the ass to get back in. It's not like it's something simple mechanics you're using tweezers almost and picks and toothpicks and just trying to get everything lined up is just such a headache I, I you save yourself a decent amount of money by doing it yourself and not taking it to a gunsmith but if you've never worked on anything like this and you're not comfortable especially since it's your everyday carry gun take it to a gunsmith and have them do it it's just going to be easier that way on you if you never work on your firearm so it's been whatever a few hours i don't even remember what this thing was pulling at at this point um almost six pounds i think it was like five pounds 11 whatever i put it on the screen so now we're going to do another 20 pulls on the gauge and i'll speed that footage up here but we'll see what kind of trigger we have and i'll go over the pole also All right, 20 pulls. With 20 trigger pulls, we have four pounds, 12.3 ounces. So we took one pound off the trigger weight with this. Uh, I think that's pretty reasonable. I really wouldn't wanna go below four pounds ever on a everyday carry. That's just, for just sheer reliability, especially on a striker gun, I feel like that's a good weight. Now, how does it feel compared to the stock one? So, the trigger itself, like we already said, the pre-travel is reduced. Not a ton, but it is. And then, it's still got a little squishiness to it, but it's more predictable now. So, when, when we're doing this, the reset doesn't really feel any different, but like there's a little squishy, th but then it breaks. As opposed to the previous footage and the previous stock trigger with the springs, like I could mush this a lot further. It, it just breaks now a lot quicker. Um, does it feel like it's crisper? Yeah, it feels a little more crisper. But not because it is a crisper trigger. I think it just feels crisper because that mushy travel has been reduced. So instead of it just smush, 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 break, and you really don't know when it's gonna break, it's smush break. So it's just much less smushiness overall rolling trigger break. It's not a crisp wall. Don't expect a hammer single action style trigger out of this. It is not that but it is greatly improved over the stock trigger. Well, we, I went ahead and put the upper on a 365 XL grip module, and this has just a different FCU in it. This FCU is newer. So this FCU probably has like a maybe 800 to 1,000 rounds through it. Um, but let's see how that one looks. So we have that take up, which is about the same on this one. And let's see what that smush, okay. Reset. Okay, that is a longer reset. Smushy, there it goes. Yeah, you just really can't tell where that's gonna break. The wall is very defined. And then smush. Reset, then smushy just, then breaks. It seems like on this one, the newer one that I have here compared to my old FCU that I have thousands of rounds through. This one, it seems like the rolling break is a little shorter. So I'm assuming if I put that tactical trigger kit in here with those springs, which I do have some left over, so I might throw those in here to see if I can improve this. But I'm gonna do um, 20 on this, 20 trigger pulls on this one with the gauge, speed up the footage and see what kind of weight this thing's at. I'm gonna reset this. Wow. 
Well now, this FCU is a newer version. I noticed it when I was installing on my original FCU. This FCU came from a P, this P365 lower uh, from years ago. And this tan uh, FCU was just purchased a year and a half ago, so, or a year ago. So this thing's fairly new, um, actually not even a year old. Uh, so some of the parts you can tell when I was up, uh, upgrading the trigger on the newer one, they have upgraded them or changed them. I don't know what the reasoning was behind that, but it definitely has some different parts inside the FCU with this version. And maybe they adjusted the springs because the stock trigger on this one with less rounds through it has an average after 20 pulls of four pounds, 11 and a half ounces. So, what the hell? Maybe I should have done that. Trigger FCU. Oh well. Uh, I think I can improve that even further with the trigger. Maybe get some of that squishiness out with changing that uh, sear spring or whatever spring it is. Sear something, striker safety, oh, striker safety spring or something like that. Uh, I'll put maybe the number three in there and see if that reduces the pull weight even further. I'm just gonna do that later. That one's actually pretty easy to do. Um, and put uh, the pre-travel stop and the over-travel stop in there. Maybe we can get this FCU running four pounds flat, who knows? So let's get out to the range. We're gonna test the tactical trigger kit with the IntelliFire uh, against the stock trigger. And we're also gonna test Steve's uh, I think he has an M Carbo trigger. I can't remember, but I, he also, I believe, has a tactical trigger kit installed in his. And we're going to do a pull weight test on his. And then we're going to see if we can run either one of them any faster. Um, obviously, this the flex lower helps with getting back down to zero. It helps you run it faster. We're going to try and see what we can do with these. And uh, let's have some fun. Stand by. Two oh seven. It's still slow. First shot's eighty-eight. Twenty-eight, twenty-six, twenty-one, twenty-two, and twenty-two. Okay. Well, your boy messed up. So I'm gonna try and keep this short and sweet because the video is already running a little long. But needless to say, my camera has a thirty-minute runtime for recording, and if you don't remember after thirty minutes to hit record again you're not recording. So I got like one string of fire with um, the Tyrant trigger on the Shalo Tech lower. Um, seemed to work great. I took this FCU out of the Shalo Tech. I put it in an XL lower. Um, I also shot Steve's Icarus Evo XL lower with M Carbo trigger and the tactical trigger kit. So his pull was lighter. His was at about four pounds. This FCU with the Tyrant is about four pounds, 12 ounces. And this stock trigger is about four pounds, 10 ounces, I believe. So four pounds, 11 ounces. So all the trigger weights were about the same. Which one shot faster? None of them really. Uh, they all shot about the exact same. Uh, I did with the Shalo Tech have tighter groups and the times were about a tenth of a second faster than any of the others and I warrant that simply to the ergonomics of this filling my hand and this having a full-on gas pedal thumb throttle on the Shalo Tech. On the XL grip I have it's just it's just narrower that's simply all it is it's just narrower so it's smaller purchase area not as much for the sport hand and I do have um, a ledge on here, more on that in another video. Um, but I ran multiple build drills with these, put a couple hundred rounds on the FCUs at that range day. And I was recording two different videos and I lost the footage cause I wasn't recording. So that sucks. Son of a bitch. But is the, tr is the trigger upgrade worth it? I personally really do like this Tyrant trigger. I, when I saw them at SHOT Show, the videos, <clears throat> I didn't think I was going to like it. The trigger shoe feels really good. Um, as compared to the stock flat blade, 
I just, I like the feel of this trigger more. I really, really do. So I think it's up, it's worth it just for the trigger. It reduced the pre-travel slightly um, and the post-travel slightly as well. So added bonus. Another added bonus, I do like that safety dingus because it, if you have a holster that holds a flashlight, there's usually a little bit of a gap here on the trigger guard area. I, something could potentially get stuck in there that's kind of a rare thing. I've never seen it happen, but it's another level of safety. So not only do you have this that won't let the trigger pull, <clears throat> you also have your the striker safety is still engaged when it's this far forward because it didn't reduce the pre-travel enough. I like it overall. I think, in my opinion, the purchase was worth it. As far as the tactical trigger kit, did it increase my speed of being able to run build drills? No, it didn't. It made the trigger pull on a fairly garbage FCU feel better. Yes, it did. Uh, I think it's worth it to put both of them on. If anything, I think you're going to have the most improvement from buying the tactical trigger kit, though. This did shorten the pre and post travel and it did reduce the weight on the trigger pull and reduce some of that mushy sloppiness within the pull itself. This alone, even on a stock trigger, will give you the best performance boost if you're looking to improve the trigger. I've, I just, I've seen so many videos out here and I don't know who to trust because everybody puts every trigger shoe and everything in and they say, oh my God, it makes the trigger so much better. And I just know it's kind of bullshit on a lot of these. The Tyrant trigger does not make your trigger better it makes it potentially more comfortable for you and an added layer of safety, which I like. I think they're both worth the price, but if anything, if you're really looking to improve your trigger, you have to go with that tactical trigger kit. I do like it. I think it's well worth the purchase. Well, after this entire f up, uh, thanks for watching. See you guys later.